she's going to be the first female fighter to represent the United States at the Olympics. It's going to be very difficult for the Olympic Games. They're only allowing 36 women in the whole world in three weight classes. For the first time ever this summer, women will step into the ring at the London Women's Games. Boxing into the Olympics was a battle in and of itself. It's going to be the best of the best, and it's going to be really, really cutthroat. The difference between her and other fighters is that she's, a, she's extremely determined and, and disciplined. She's going to make you feel extremely uncomfortable. So if you're not prepared for that, then you're going to be in for a long, long night with this girl. Part of being a fighter is learning to adjust and adapt and have a different game plan. After I had to withdraw from the Olympic trials, it took me over a year before I could really start forgiving myself for feeling I failed. You know, things happen for a reason. When I always say who I am, I am a trans masculine person of color. You know, in boxing, it was already weird that I was like the queer butch one that was very obviously not in the aesthetic that sponsors wanted. Robert is my boxing coach of over eight years. We've been very close. You know, he was with me at the Olympic trials. He actually was the one who made the decision to pull me out after my shoulder was injured. I always knew that even if I was down, that he would figure out a strategy. To be able to box in the male division, it's everything right now. It was in, I think, March 2013. Someone had said something, oh, but you're such a pretty girl. And it was like, this is it, I'm done. I'm done trying to pretend to be something I'm not. This is who I am, <laughs> you're gonna have to deal with it. For this top surgery, since I'm still fighting with my insurance, my grandma is basically putting up the money. You know, my grandma just says, you are always my grandson. I realized that we just didn't have even the right clothes at the time. You're going with this, Grim? <laughs> I know you do. I just <laughs> Grandma loves you so much, she's paying for an expensive food job. <laughs> I love you. I love you too, Grandma. Alright, go ahead. Okay. What did you do? Goodbye. I mean, a part of me does not want to say it's going to change my life because I would still be a whole and happy person, but oh my god, losing my breast is like the most amazing thing ever that's going to happen to me. <laughs> last meal before, didn't refer, my boobs last meal. I don't know if people understand the anxiety that goes into when you step out of a shower and you look at yourself in the mirror and see something that's so entirely out of place, something that completely disrupts your view of yourself and your identity. You never get used to it. Have to worry about the patriarchy now. <laughs> I'm Pat. Hi, I'm Loretta. I'm Pat's mother. Nice to meet you. So you're ready? Mm -hmm. Ready to go? Good job. Okay. Bring this right to your waist. And stand straight and kind of keep your shoulders low. And just, just get everything as symmetric as we can. So flat. Cover on up for me, and that's all we need. All right. Thank you. Excited? Yes. <laughs> about time, huh? Yeah, it's about time. Okay. I'm just trying to wait for your 
I'm just happy Pat finally gets, you know, gets to have the surgery because I know how happy I'll make him. <laughs> I didn't really see deep into the issue. How did I fail you as a mother? And it makes me so emotional. You feel as a parent when you love your child so much. You don't get to feel those emotions, but you feel like you failed them. You feel you should feel their emotions. Your connection's so strong. I believe Pat was born a boy, and then we misgendered him. Great play. Okay, I love you, baby. I'll see you in just a couple hours. Right, see you four. Okay, bye. <laughs> Thank you. I love you. I want you to take three or four really deep breaths from here, all the way in, and all the way out. There you go. Perfect. Thank you, my mind, about how close he is to me, and this is actually happening. It's just I can't cross the red line which is sort of how I feel as a parent of a trans child, because you can never really know exactly how they feel. You know, there's always sort of that red line. Always. <laughs> I'm always proud of Pat. I just want him to be safe. That's all. I can't imagine not being there if my children need me. You want your kids to be comfortable and accepted and you know when he would go to graduations I'd make him wear a skirt and I'm thinking what did I do why did I do that to him that's really painful for me and I made him do those things because I didn't realize I just didn't realize it was so painful for him I would take that all back I just want him to be happy, and I, oh, I wish I could take that all back. So, I feel like I failed Pat so horribly. The only difference is I get the opportunity to change it, and I don't take that for granted. I am so thankful for that every day, and I will, you know, every day I will think about that. It's not about my reality, it's about Pat's reality. Deep breath in, blow it away. You're doing great. It went really well, baby. Okay. Uh, you feel good? Go there, yeah. Feeling good? Yeah, I'm grasping it now. You're grasping yeah. it? Good. You just had surgery, that's why. You're going to be back able to do calculus. <laughs> uh, they were <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's coherent, and I'm going to be taking him home in about half an hour. So you'll be able to talk to him then. Yeah, he's good. He's very happy. I'm hoping that it's still like, wow, this is great, and that I'm really happy, but I also have to, you know, kind of almost anticipate something or something happening where I'm not happy with the way my body looks, but I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that that doesn't happen. It's pretty amazing. I know that I'm not going into this alone, so it makes it much more comforting. Jesus. Yeah. I'm curious to see how long it takes to kick us out. I'm feeling pretty good as long as I don't get jarred or stand up straight. And yeah, mostly just tired because my vest is itchy. But otherwise, feeling pretty good. good morning. I think trying to explain people what it's like, you know, being trans, when you go into that bathroom, is someone gonna notice? And is this the day that someone's gonna have take offense from that? I have to come out all the time. And that's something that you always have to, it's always a fight and you're always on unless you're actually with your own community. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost eight. All my worries have been taken care of today. So we have a good reveal. 
Okay. Hello. Hello. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? How are you feeling? I'm feeling good, thank you. Yeah, you're all smiles. Yeah, yeah. I'm ready to get these brains out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, as long as it's still holding suction, we figure it still has some benefit, so okay. we'll be getting rid of that now. Okay. All right, well, let's just get started. So why don't you sit on up here? While it's drying. Okay. It's okay. All right, so we're going to slowly take all this off. I can wash it today while you're taking your shower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can kind of start to see. Did you take a peek already? Barely. I'm like literally up to here. Two for two. All right. What do you think? Looks good. Sit up and look for a sec. Yeah. We'll put some dressings on. So you have to kind of squint when you look. I think it's good to kind of imagine a shadow here mm -hmm. you know, with the pec muscle coming down and um, once this kind of flattens out and this plumps up, yeah, the scars fade. Nice but you have a you have scar. a general idea where the scars are, and yeah, and right. boxing. I'm not continuing to do it for a long time, but like ten weeks. <laughs> you know, it's a judgment call. I would think okay. that by about the one month mark, you start to work out and see what okay. feels right. I mean, we certainly don't want to blow. Yeah, I'm not gonna get hit. Yeah, <laughs> I okay. don't think anything can be hurt very much in terms of the surgical. Okay. Um, repair. You know, all the repair. So. Okay, that sounds good. Okay. okay, so yeah, good luck with everything. Something to look snow. Right? Thank you very much, Doctor. You're oh, welcome. Good. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, baby. Yeah, so we just saw the doctor. Oh, what did she say? Everything looks good. Oh, I'm so glad. Thank you for making this possible. Oh, you said you're back. I love you so much. And I'll talk to you guys later, okay? All right, love you, Grandma. Drive safe. I shall. Bye. All right, bye. Yeah. <laughs> More bras, so nice. young I saw myself only as a boy and then, you know as I got older then I, you know people are like no you're not before when I looked like either a very feminine man or I looked like a very masculine woman then I kind of like was in between both being a man and a woman I'm still not a man that was born a man and conditioned that way I don't think it was a mistake that I was born female, but that's that's a part of my identity that I don't ever want to lose. I think that's when I'm really scared, is not knowing what it feels like to be viewed as something other than a man. Pockets. Yeah, throwing out the fro. I actually like it. I didn't think I was going to, but I'm digging it. Except for people trying to touch it. My boxing style is starting to change. You know, I don't have the same overwhelming physical strength that I used to. My coaches are trying not to get me to be that person that just kind of tries to maul everyone. To me, like, Vic set such a big precedent of the way I should be treated, and that's just as a normal person. So I go there, I box, I'm known as Pat, I'm known as a dude, I spar men, and that's it. I don't think he really realizes how important that was to me. You know, now I'm in a gym where all the thing I worry about is getting ready for the next fight. Shirt used to be a lot looser, bigger than I used to be when I got this stuff. Yeah, I definitely feel more comfortable. I don't feel, uh, I don't feel different. Which I mean, I know I am different, but 
you know, it's nice to when I train just to be a fighter and not have to, you know, worry about the stuff I have to worry about every other, you know, every other minute of the day. Like tendons and joints and bones like they're they're feeling the impact and because like you know you have more muscle you're able to produce more force um, the tendons and joints aren't adjusted to that type of output um, so the only thing like I'm slightly concerned about is like messing up my wrist or hands or joints or ligaments um, so my body is still really adjusting to its current form and how much and how strong it is basically it's it's such a big difference for people who are viewed as male or female in our society you know, with male athletes, they didn't have to compete against the entire society, basically. In female boxing, we had to basically fight to get our way to even fight. So we were all really close, and I kind of, I kind of miss those certain parts of me. It's also really hard to see yourself handed something, to see yourself handed different privileges when before you had to fight so hard for them. I remember the dialogue word for word. Go for it. Uh, it was, uh, well, it was at the gym, and the gym is in a shopping complex that has a movie theater. It was like, I'm going to go see a movie after we train tonight. So I was like, good for you. <laughs> and then, and then uh, he was like, well, I have two passes to the movies if you want to come with me. And I was like, um, well, I guess it depends what's playing. I'll walk over there with you after we work out and see. And Selma was playing and neither of us had seen it and so we went and saw Selma. And it was not a date. It I mean, was a very long, drawn out process of realizing, like, oh, I think we like each other. Uh, we should talk about this. Yeah, you know, I couldn't do anything because I didn't want to be like, you know, it was a professional work relationship. I'm the one that fired you. Or right, that's not how it happened. Yes, it is. It's not, you never said that was fired. It wasn't fired exactly. It was oh, but it basically <laughs> was. I started Hormones September 6, 2013. I take one milliliter of 200 milligrams of testosterone every two weeks. I will have to continue to inject for my entire life. I've been passing pretty much as a man 100% of the time. And it's also I get to see the way like men treat women and men treat men differently. I always try to say, you know, I'm trans masculine. It's my own definition of masculinity that's outside of what society says masculinity has to be. Me being shown as a trans athlete is great, but it's not helping someone in their everyday life. It's not just my visibility I'm giving people, but I'm actually teaching people different things. And I need to do something more than just be a person standing in front of a camera. No, I haven't seen her yet. to make sure we get the right opponent. And like I said, the thing that concerns me is Pat being off so long. So I just want to make sure we're, we're not overmatching Pat on this first fight. He lost in the finals of the Desert Showdown. Oh, this guy did? Yeah. You saw him before? No, they just told me. 
many fights does your guy have? 18? It's been, it's been four yeah. years. Yeah, I want to fight the best guy this year. Whoever the best 130 is. Yeah. Put Pat with um, a guy named Vaughn. With Vaughn? Purchase? Yeah. No, no, no. Huh? <laughs> with Vaughn. Wait. Come on. Yeah, is that, that guy real good? That what weight he is fighting at? In the beginning, yeah. I dropped the weight. Yes, I want to be careful because he's been off for four years. Yeah, I don't I care what athlete, in the greatest oh, no, four I years know. off is a long time. Yeah, you throw me in there, someone like that is 200 fights. Olympia. No, no, I, no I, I know, I know. Which is the job is to yeah. yeah. You're just going to have to be patient. A man loses to a woman, it looks bad. So what happens when a trans masculine person goes and fights against a real man and beats that guy? You know, then their whole gender is questioned, their whole manliness is questioned, even though it has nothing to do with that. It's the way society views it. Which one? Oh, the white dude? Yeah. He was talking to me earlier. They said, yeah, they'll take the fight as long as the, the pre-match opponent doesn't show up. So we just gotta hope the pre-match opponent doesn't show up. <laughs> like, don't show up. <laughs> you need this? Just in case. You guys ain't, the guy hasn't shown up, right? No, no, that's good. And I think that's, you know, definitely going to be in a lot of guys' minds of how am I gonna look after this? How is it gonna make me, how is it going to check my manhood, even though it shouldn't be in any relation to that. You feel ready? Yeah, I want to get going. Uh, let's go. Yeah, we're going to do it. You know, I had a good feeling because it's always like when you're the least prepped and ready and done the most is always when the fights actually happen. So I was like, you know what, that's, I'm just going to roll into this because that's generally the way things roll. They just, they bounce? Yeah, they bounce. What do you mean next time? Your fighter's ready to go. We're here. What's, yeah. What are you going to wait for? Wait till you have to fight me in a tournament? Yeah. There's no choice? That's what I looked over and I was like, something's going on. Yeah, I seen him grab his book. And I was like, what's he grabbing his book for? And he said, the coach said, no. And I said, why? They won't tell you why? I mean, the thing is, all you have to do is Google my name. Things pop up. So someone told them something. I don't know what it was. It made them change their mind. The term people like to use, fragile masculinity. Um, people are afraid that it's a no-win situation for them, that I'm not a real man. So if you beat me, it's beating a girl. If you get beat by me, which is the thing what the real fear is, because I have a lot of experience, then you lose to a girl. I really thought today was going to be the day, and I thought it was really fitting, considering this was the day that you know, I had to leave my gym and my team. It would have been, you know, super victorious to be like, ha, I'm going to reclaim this day as actually something where, you know, I was able to fight. But instead, it's one of those like, hmm, was this transphobia actually robbing me of a moment? I don't know. the sense of confidence I basically have in myself. I think a lot of that comes from being from a household that always told me that I was worth it. I was never told that I couldn't be something, that I couldn't do something that was a great foundation of believing in myself. I very rarely let doubt creep into my head. When I want something, I really, really want it. And even as tired as I am, I'll figure out a way to push through to get there. I don't want to lose, I don't want to look bad, I want to, I want to be able to compete, I don't want any more setbacks. I want to be full steam forward from here on out, and that's just going to keep me propelling me forward each time.
they pre match people before, so oh, yeah. apparently our fight's gonna be the uh, the, the fight tonight. <laughs> Get a job. Hang on. That knocked off a little rust. Thank you very yeah, much. That definitely knocked off some rust. We're going to do a raffle right now for this beautiful <laughs> thing. You guys, all, I hope all have your raffle tickets. I know. I love you. 813. Yeah, I just felt super rusty, though, especially yeah, well, that first round. Damn, it's a long time. I know. You know I'm always going to be yeah. hard on myself. To me, it's a great start. As long as you're happy with it. I'll just keep working hard. We're going to come back and spark. So yeah, yeah. that's the only way to get better. Yeah. What was he back? It was tough, man. <laughs> it was a tough, tough fight. Yeah. You know, I felt like really rusty, especially the first round. You did good though. Four years. I know. So it's just gotta keep keep moving. You know, that's it. Thank you. All right. All right, thanks. We'll see you. I'll All see right. you on Monday. Monday. All right. I really, really miss feeling my arm raise, and I miss hearing them announce my name, and I miss. I even miss just the congratulations afterwards and then the pride from my coaches who put the work into me too. You know, I really, I miss feeling like a winner and I think I haven't really felt like that in, in years because I haven't won a fight in so long. This is how I always saw myself in my head. It's finally having an outward image that matched the one in my, in my mind. I really can't even explain how like relieving it is. Every day, just kind of like just feel my chest to be like, oh, this is like actually here. It's not a dream. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Boom. Looks like spot set. Sorry, dude. That is like an eight dollar bra. So it is burning to bring a fucking wow. yellow paper shirt. <laughs> There's no deeper meaning, I can tell you. Other than I thought it'd be hilarious. I've never been able to bring a bra, and now I can. 